Okay. So I'm going to go over uh, Catalyst, uh, JQ Grid, and uh, using the rest of those uh, for data tables. Devin Austin, that's my email address. I'm not a programmer. Um, Catalyst is obviously a web, web, web framework uh, in Perl. Uh, JQ, JQ Grid is a, JQ, is a jQuery plugin slash framework for data table grids. Um, data table uh, is basically an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, or if I Excel spreadsheet for uh, web pages. REST is a protocol. Uh, in tandem with HTTP that uh, makes writing ajax -y web applications a lot easier. And, uh, I do believe um, the Perl is the end I do believe that you a great want a data table and anything, you're going to have a lot of data. Like you, you don't necessarily and need a whole lot of uh, view logic that doesn't really matter what it looks like. You just need a lot of data displayed at once in a way that you can uh, see most of it on one, one page. Uh, it also, it's also there for uh, quick manipulation. If you want to sort things, if you want to search things, if you want to uh, paginate quick. It's, it's basically really quick uh, point and click access. Another nice thing about uh, data grids is uh, point and click edit. So you double click edit a record, hit enter. Good. Uh, creating a record is also uh, nice too. So that's the idea. It's it's uh, kind of usually you get these on like a administrative uh, in, in, inventory type list. Uh, someone has an inventory of a bunch of items. They want to display it all at once, mostly at once. You know, maybe 50, 100 records at a time. Uh, you'd be able to go through and edit, uh, create, or delete as as needed. So this is what this is kind of the default JQ grid. Um, as you can see, you have a reasonable view of your data right there. Uh, it looks nice. It's not super styled up, but it's enough to uh, let you know. Okay, well here's how I search. Here's how I paginate. This is what page I'm on. So many records on which I was. So, again, you want to use a, a JQ grid for anything that you have a large data set on and you don't want to do a lot of clicking and uh, editing. Why, again? You don't really want to spend a whole lot of time on setting up your interface. You want to have as much pre made as you can and just basically spit it out there. Um, you want to use JQ grid because it's quick to set up, set up. well, data grid because it's quick to set up. And uh, there's really hardly any UI uh, configuration or hacking to do. All the images come with, all the style sheets come with. Uh, all you're doing really is telling you how you want your data to display. And you really don't even have to do that. Uh, it gives you a nice saying API. You can focus on your business logic and develop a, a back-end web app that um, can send out well-formed data and your data grid acts around that, as opposed to you conforming your data, your, your web application to uh, what your UI is going to need. So obviously we need a countless application with data source. So this is really, the, the web application is even really arbitrary as long as you can um, send JQ grid something that they can understand. Currently I think it's, the, it, Obviously, it supports uh, JSON and XML. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure it supports other things out of the box. Um, and JQ grid via JSON. Uh, what I've heard, though, is a lot of people call it JIT. People who so, program in Perl. In our Catalyst work. example, we're obviously going to want to create a method. Uh, in Catalyst, control rest, you have a default method. Uh, let me back up. Catalyst controller rest was created before chain. I don't know if any of you guys know what chain dispatching is. I think that's one of the things that people don't It's basically it's basically uh, I really don't want to say same routes like Ruby on Rails, but it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's, it's much more logical than that. It's basically your URL structure in the same uh, programmatic tree. I guess. So you get the same, you know, you get your uh, controller name slash action. Uh, you have a URL. It's 
a little hard to explain, I guess. Uh, it's a little beyond the scope of this talk. But basically, you have uh, you have a method, and then you write um, underscore underscore uh, rest or HTTP method uh, for that act for that methods for that actions uh, rest method. So if you want to get method, you underscore you write your method name. And you write a method uh, that does all the logic in your get, or all the logic in your post. So if you're getting a record, you obviously want to return a database record. And uh, JSON, or whatever. Post, you want to create a record, and return a response. Um, the great thing about Catalyst Controller REST is it has um, serialization and deserialization. Uh, by default. Um, so all you have to worry about is writing your code and then choosing whether you want to send back an XML response, JSON response, a SOAP response, a YAML response. So that, uh, it's really useful in GETs because you can send back uh, your data as a JSON object or JSON string. You can actually send posts as JSON as well. So that's the idea behind Catalyst Controller REST uh, in a nutshell. Any questions so far? So that's sort of what the setup is here. You obviously have your CRUD methods. Uh, this is just sort of a skeleton on how um, you probably want your setup. Create's going to want to get, so in case you have someone paying your web application, to get returned a uh, form. Obviously, it's going to want to post, so you can create your records. Read's probably just going to want to get method, since you really don't want to be posting to a read uh, action. Your update action is going to probably want to get and a put method, since, again, you want to return a form if someone gets your web app, and you want to be able to update records uh, via put, which is the um, prescribed REST uh, method. Delete is probably just going to want to get. Uh, you can do uh, a REST delete, but a lot of browsers and um, REST implementations don't support a delete request because of uh, security concerns. So here's a little look in the chain. Um, this is basically setting up your root URL. Uh, what this does is grabs. Uh, it's gra it grabs either 10 record, it either grabs the query strings rows entity or 10 records. Uh, same thing with page. And you actually use uh, data is actually supposed to be uh, C rec params or C rec data. C rec data is um, Catalyst Controller REST's. Uh, and PHP. interpretation of params, where it's taking all the, it's taking the request, request and putting it into a Perl data structure, which is a hash in this case. And, uh, order is on the next slide. There's a, I just did a little munching so that uh, DBA, it would be safe for DBA to see. But this is basically how it looks, the chain root uh, looks. This is before, this doesn't return. This is an actual, an actual URL endpoint. It's before your URL endpoint. Uh, this is the order uh, variable. Basically, all it's doing is checking to see if uh, jQuery has actually sent back a uh, index, a sort order, um, and if not, we just uh, we just order by order to send order by created at. In the database call and the database uh, descent. So this is actually the first endpoint. This will be the uh, root of your web app. Uh, it chains off the initial uh, chain of, of the catalyst uh, of that, that last action. So here. And it's, an act, it's a REST action class. So that's basically applying the uh, REST Catalyst, catalyst action rest to this action so that it knows to serialize the uh, coming in right now. Uh, again, all this does right here is set up your endpoint. And you have a method here called serialize post, which um, is kind of the bulk of this application, actually. 
uh, as it serializes the data into a curl data structure that can be then translated into JSON as something JQGRAM like. The other part that. So this is that method. Basically, what we're looking for is a grid layout, and programmatically, basically, you just want an href with your rows and cells defined. And the cells are just an array of, in, in order, they're presented in order uh, across the across the columns. All they do is they, as you uh, define them in the cells array. So basically, JQ Grid wants a page. Uh, number of rows, total records, and uh, records is, is actually the, the number of records returned, and total is actually the last page that's going to be page for uh, So basically, that's all that's doing. Uh, this is the this is a little more clear uh, data structure of what JSON or JQ Grid wants. Uh, and this is translated into JSON, which is very similar to this. Uh, basically, each one of these um, is going to be, each one of these is a post, let's say, a blog entry. It's got a unique ID, and then it's got each of the database columns defined in the array. So it, it, uh, it's fairly, I, I, if anybody has any questions, it's but I, I think it's personally fairly uh, straightforward as far as I go. So this is the get method I was talking about. And basically what you do should be, um, there's no error checking here because it should be in the base. But what it does is it returns a status of okay, which is a 200, I believe, uh, for rest. And uh, the entity, entity is, a, uh, is what's returned. To the web, uh, web uh, the other thing we need what, what's return number is in response. So this will be serialized to JSON basically. And uh, it's an array of those and it's serialized as a JSON response in this instance. So that's basically the bulk of uh, the work you actually have to do for this. Everything else is typical HTTP or REST uh, requests. Um, that, that's the nice thing about JQ Grid is it, it sends only what you want it to send as you want it to send, and it doesn't really do anything fancy uh, beyond how it displays the data. And that's only because it's in a grid format and you need to be in some sort of readable grid format. Um, again, everything is pretty much standard HTTP and REST. Uh, uh, this is very bare bones uh, JQ grid setup, jQuery. Uh, this is there's some URL, there's some URL, uh, and uh, generic configuration that goes above this, but um, that's pretty straightforward. You just give it a URL. Initially, you give it a URL that is going to send all the requests to, but if you want. URLs that have like item slash number slash update or delete. You have to do a couple different things. But if you want to, you know, create a record, that's fine. You just define. You can use the default uh, URL parameter. You delete a record, you can set a long in ID. Uh, that's pretty easy. Um, the big points here are setting AJAX grid options to application JSON or whatever you want your response to be. Um, same with row options. And, uh, if you want, if you want your updates, uh, you click on your double click, click updates. Uh, to be a different method than whatever the default is. You can specify that here. Uh, and serializing the row data uh, as JSON is important too. Otherwise, you're just going to get, uh, I believe it's just HTML back or something. So, this is what I was talking about as far as the grid goes. You have your uh, column headers and they're displayed in order uh, across the grid, left to right. And this is uh, an example of one of the, uh, basically one of the cell definitions, actually one of the column definitions. Um, so it's, it's, this is in JSON, and basically you just have a uh, name for the column, it's indexed in the uh, 
I mean, gave us what you yeah, gave it, and like some that, but I think uh, that my few uh, information as far as width and whatnot. If you want double click, I mean, on click, I don't know if editing, or single click, stuff. whatever, I mean, throw you specify an on select row callback, uh, it, it passes the uh, row ID to the function, and again, you want to set the content type, content type to whatever you want your response to be. Um, Basically, all this is checking to see is if you've updated the row after clicking on it. If it's been updated, it uh, sends an AJAX call out to the update URL, which is, um, this is actually, you write one of these if you want a different update URL than the default URL is specified in the very Here. So this allows you to do uh, your more restful URLs. Is the action uh, after the ID. So, the summation of the markup in JavaScript, you need, uh, well, basically, you need a, a table with an ID, and that could be as little as table ID equals and a name and then close a table tag, and then that about JavaScript. So, a little demo here of a CMS I wrote. Yeah. This is uh, this is from a live database. There's rows populated. I had some issues actually rendering the uh, bottom the pagination row and whatnot, but you can page through pretty easily. And, uh, it tells you how many records. Yeah. Um, I think that the biggest and the, the need is right now and, uh, uh, you see, uh, no. in a uh, marketing degree. Uh, it's actually a half hour half business on how to start your own business in part. You can uh, click and edit uh, records really easy. And you, you don't have to really you don't have to write any uh, view logic for this. As long as you have your logic for updating, reading, processing, deleting and then the higher architecture level uh, oh oh and that goes into so Python. The, uh, I ran into some issues actually with the delete action. It, again, kind of conflicts with that default URL. For some reason, it's really hard to send JP grid um, a delete ID or an action, an ID of a record, and a delete action. It kind of just wants to stick with the default URL unless you do some kind of nasty packing. So I just got tired of it and started putting listing my actions below the uh, grid. But um, it works well enough for me that I can just display data uh, in a pretty uh, sensible way without doing really any uh, view. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Some of that was a little uh, higher level. level and it's, it's really hard to cover some of the chain. And, and you get practice, they get practice, and the students get exposed to more Perl and hands-on Perl and somebody they can talk before bumming you guys for an internship later with free code writing. Okay. That's all I got. I, mean, I don't think you guys are going to get during college lectures. Uh, and you can offer a ton of things.